Hello everyone, this is Sanan and today I'm going to explain you the numerical model of drop weight impact on composite laminates. So I'll be going through the modeling of uh, each and every steps of uh, the drop weight impact on composite laminates. Uh, in my earlier videos, I have received many comments that I'm not uh, actually uh, <laughs> modeling the, uh, the flow out setup. Uh, in, in my previous videos I, I received these kind of comments and also I am not showing the results directly because many of the people uh, are receiving some errors in the during the running part of the model. So uh, I have taken these uh, complaints and uh, today I will be going through the each and every step of uh, comprehensively each and every step of how to model the drop weight impact and then uh, correspondingly I will be going to show you the results as well. Uh, so if there will be any errors that will be uh, curtailed or minimized so first of all uh, let's see the this is the ASTM designated 7136M setup uh, that this is the latest uh, setup which came in two, 2015 and uh, it is named as standard test method for measuring the damage resistance of a fiber reinforced polymer matrix composite to a drop weight impact event so <coughs> uh, this setup has uh, like this you can see a fixture where a four clamps are there that are used to clamp the test specimen so we will model only one fourth part of this and we won't uh, going to model these uh, these clamps all these things we will try to give a uh, appropriate boundary condition so that the model works for us and also we have a tub uh, this is the uh, first fixture and also we have a tub of 16 mm diameter so the dimensions all these things I know so uh, we'll, go in, we'll go through the model and uh, we'll try to make them so first of all try to make a, a ik, uh, any one of the composite uh, let's say composite 0 degree I'll try to make and I'll make this deformable solid uh, uh, extruded and uh, take the approximate size as 0.3 uh, so that we will be able to model everything in meter and continue. We'll, as I said, we are going to model only one fourth part. So uh, give them the dimensions. Uh, my length is around uh, so the total length of the plate is 125 mm by 100 mm so uh, removing the uh, uh, this total part is uh, this total part is 125 by 100 so i'll uh, uh, remove these spaces of 25 mm offset from all of them so that effectively it comes out to be 125 by 75 so i'll model half of the 125 that will be 62.5 and uh, this width which will be uh, half of 75 75 okay and uh, align them to the center give them a thickness of 55 sorry 0.5 mm so that is my uh, uh, one fourth part of the composite laminate uh, now I will be making a tub or impactor so my tub 3D discrete rigid shell and revolving okay As I said, my top is 16 mm diameter. So I'll take it radius 8 and this is my only one foot part. Remove these parts. Let's take uh, this length as 5 mm. 
aligning to center. The aligning part to the center is very important. It will going to convincingly easy my steps during the assembly part and I'll rotate it to the 90 degree. So that is my turn. Okay, so my part module is complete. I'll come in the property module. In the property module, first to the tab. There is no need to assign any property to the tab as it is discrete rigid. I'll assign a mass to it. Before assigning mass, I need to give a reference point on this axis. So this is the y axis. I will give 0, comma, let's say 5 mm, comma 0. Okay. So this reference point will be on the center of gravity of this um, tub. So center of gravity is usually half the side. So I'm going to increase this center of gravity to 57. That will be around the center of gravity. You can calculate the center of gravity then make it along uh, as you like it. Then come to spatial inertia and assign a mass to it. So my total mass is 3.132 kg and uh, 3.132 kg. So I'll make it half of it, 0.783 I guess, something like that. Okay, so that will be my mass assigned to the tank. I have a composite also, so I'll try to I'll try to do I'll try to assign a property. So to assign a property, let's come to a composite layer. Take a continuum shell elements. You can take a conventional shell. You can take continuum shell also. Shell elements are good. This is my only one layer, so I'll take one. Okay, so this is a dialog box. In the in my earlier videos, I have explained about this dialog box. So there will not be that much of problem. Relative thickness, as I said, number of elements are used on this thickness. These will be two elements, so relatively be relatively becomes 0.5. Rotation angle is zero. Okay. So that is done. Zero degree. Uh, let's come to assembly module. Uh, this is my tap. Okay, I'll bring the composite first. Apply. So this is my center part. <coughs> so at this point, I'm going to make an impact. To make an impact at this point, I also need to make an impact zone. A zone where my impact will take place so i will remember this coordinate system z down in this y in this x in this okay just remember this coordinate system z down this format so that's my coordinate system this will be my center okay this will be my center now i'll make a impact zone on this is partition oh I lost it I lost it sorry have to see where my point is this is my point okay face partition that's an object sorry mm, face partition this will be my impact point. Remember this. That is my impact point. Okay, so I'll make an note to it. I'll make an offset. Add offset. I'll take an offset of the impact zone. Uh, my diameter of the top is uh, 16 mm. So I'll, uh, and since we are modeling it only quarter part, so we'll make an offset of uh, uh, 8 mm. So let's make it a 9 mm, so it will be a conservative offset and take an offset at this part also, 9 mm offset, fine, done. So I will be able to make 
this offset now I am going to now make a cell of it so this is my edge this is my edge extruded so that it becomes through the thickness sorry extruded through the thickness so that partition is created pick the cells again select these two edges extrude it along the direction click so my partition is made so this is my partition this is this is my partition so it will going to extremely simplify the machine strategy that that i'm going to follow on this and now this is done so now it's the time to make the new laminate this is the zero degree laminate copy it and make it a 90 degree so my zero degree will remain intact and my 90 degree also here so now i'll give a property to this 90 degree laminates give a 90 degree property 90 degree properties will be oriented to 90 degree now so i have a composite zero degree as you can see here zero degree everything rest of rest of everything is same and 90 degree rest of the things are same and i have a tub which through which i have assigned the mass no need for any properties of this fine and uh, about the properties that i have used i have used the same properties that i have already used uh, in my previous videos so you can go through that and you can get the properties let's assemble the model now so my zero degree layer is here so this is my first zero degree layer i'll make a zero 90 90 zero composite so bring the 90 degree layer offset bring the 90 degree layer again sorry again 90 degree and then bring the zero degree okay now i have to align them or assemble them this will be a 90 degree layer assign and align every one of them 90 again okay so all of these layers are aligned now uh, and you can see in the this assembly module this is 0 degree then 90 degree then 90 degree then 0 degree again so all of them are now now it's time to bring it up okay here it came okay now rotate this stuff this tub will be rotated in the YZ plane. YZ plane. I'll rotate it minus 90. Let us go. Okay. Translate the tub. placed it on the center as I said if you make it the way I have done there then it will be very easy to assemble them now uh, during the first impact the top has to be a little bit up a little bit up from the first laminate so I will make it up my this direction is Z I will give them the negative uh, 0.5 mm. Sorry, my first 
to value zero now. So this is my start point and my end point will be let's say point five mm up. Sorry, negative. Okay. Point five is also very much. Let's say point two mm. Point two is fine. So for during the first impact, there will be uh, no contact between the laminate and the tap. So my assembly module is completed. Let's come in the step module. Def after the initial step, define the abacus dynamic explicit. In the dynamic explicit, decide the time, time that you are going to do. I will model it on 10 milliseconds. Rest of the part let it be same for now 10 milliseconds ok now in the field output I have the first field output I have many things in this I don't need all of them let's I need only stresses what I need I need stresses I need strains, I need displacement, I need uh, velocity, no need for velocity, force, yes I need forces, I need contact, no need for contact for now, failure, yes do. I do need failure, I need a hashing failure criteria that I have used, so this will initiate the hashing failure criteria and I will also going to use the, the quadratic traction damage criteria because this criteria will going to initiate the uh, delamination between the plies. So this will be activated. If there is anything else? This I don't need. Yes, do give some failure part. Give map status. This will delete the elements. Okay some other part we do. rest of the part we don't need we may also need this shear shear damage ok rest of the part we don't need ok so this will be ok history output so I will tell you what uh, output from the history that I need so let's come to the next step first interaction so the interaction between these plates and between the top and this first part of this laminate needs to be created. So in the top, I will select the surface of the top, outer surface. What is that? Inside, internal face is brown, so I will select brown. And my first laminate will be a composite laminate, zero degree. So that part will be in contact so my first surface is this surface fine let's come to interaction again so now first of all I def define the automatic way of defining the different uh, make it as small as possible find the contact pair so these are the contact pair 090 9090 layer and 90 0 so make the 90 0 as 090 last layer and this will going to create my surfaces so I'll delete all of these because these are the surface to surface interactions I don't need surface to surface interaction I only need the general contact so this is my general contact explicit continue all this self will going to work ok and this is individually property assignment from my previous lecture, this is known that the properties that are required between the 0 90 and between the 90 90 will be different. So I have already made these properties. Uh, you can, f uh, to look much about these properties, you can go towards my earlier videos. So I select 0 90 and select the property 0 90. I select 90 90 and select the property 90 90. I select 0 90 again, select the 0 90 property. I select the top face, this is the internal face coming, ok, I have made a small mistake there, no problem, I will correct it, and this part, ok, 
ओके एंड दैट ऑल डॉक्यूमेंट ओके दिस इज फेक just go through my earlier videos and you will find why i have written a fake here i i'll also explain you now no problem um, so first of all correct that i have to choose the other part in my tab surface i have to choose the other surface choose the purple Let's come in the diffraction again and see if this becomes a purple or not. So fine, ठीक है my outer part of this and this will go to impact. That's fine now. Now why I've written fake here? I'll go towards this because if you run this with the cohesive interactions, so Abacus will give you a warning that it will not be able to make the general contact in this way. so i am only give a normal property in this usually fake there is no specific property in this tangential behavior frictionless just allow me to bypass that error okay rest of the properties i have already explained now come to the tap impact property that is a tangential behavior define a friction between them between a tap and this plate and define also define a normal behavior that is very important a hard contact between a between a hard tap and uh, a laminate uh, this part of the laminate so hard contact will be also beneficial here and also allow to sep allow separation after contact so that part is done now my body this body is a rigid body so i'll also define a rigid body here my rigid body body elements i'll define a rigid body fine and i'll define a reference point right this is body is defined that part is done after that i'll come to load module in the load module i have to do many things so first of all uh symmetry yes we require a x axis and y axis symmetry so let's say x symmetry So my x symmetry will be this. This will be my x symmetry, and that will be my y symmetry. Y symmetry. So this will be my y symmetry. I have defined the x and y symmetries. Now I have to define the my fixed boundary condition. So my fixed boundary condition, as I said, you can you don't need to model uh, everyone on this. You only need to model an edge. So if I will, I have offset it 25 mm in the dimensions. and i during the impact when the impact on this occur this part will not going to allow the plate to move so but the rotations are allowed so displacement in the all the three directions are curtailed but the rotations are allowed so i'll try to make the boundary condition in such a way so that my rotations are allowed and only edge is effective so i'll make the edge boundary condition this will be the only part that will be curtailed at the edge fine and i use it bend all the three directions are not allowed but the rotations along this is allowed fine now the important boundary condition which is called as a velocity we have to give the velocity Now the velocity will be given to the reference point of this, and uh, I have already done these tests, so I know what my velocity is. 
this is my test that I have already done. So this is my force time history and the velocity is around 2.51 mm. 51 mm. 5.1 meter per second. And I also need to discuss this that you need to give the velocity with respect to amplitude. This is because you need to definitely you need to output the force history. There are two ways by which the force history can be outputted. I mean force time graph. So if you are doing drop it impact, you definitely need, definitely need a force time history. So two ways of doing it is you define a force time history by taking a reference point, define a set here uh, that I'm going to do. Define a set of reference point, and during the impact, this part is as it is going to go through this 2.5 meter per second velocity so it will give you reactions so that reactions are recorded and I'm going to get the force from that the second part is you can make a surface to surface contact of this part and this part make a surface to surface contact and then output the contact force so that contact force will also be the force uh, force time history that you can do but I thought that this way will be much better because uh, the impact uh, of this tap to this we should should be preferably should be defined through the general contact only. So if you if you are going to use the uh, surface to surface contact, just remember to use the penalty contact algorithm. Otherwise, for a kin kinematic contact algorithm, there will be a lot of uh, convergence issues you will face. And also, while giving this amplitude, uh, while giving this velocity, you have to vary the velocity with respect to the normalized amplitude. So, I have already used this amplitude. This is my amplitude that I have used. So, I have normalized the velocity. And my time duration is around, around 10 milliseconds that I have inputted there. Around 10. That is approximately around that. So this you can see some negative values and some positive values also. That means the projectile hits that and then comes back. So the velocity time history that I have obtained through the experiments, I have normalized it and used in this amplitude. So this is done. Now after that, I have to define a set so that I can use a force RT. That's So this will be my reference point set. Okay, this will be my reference point set. From this set, I'm going to output the reaction forces during the impact and my displacement during the impact. I can input output the velocity also. So go to the step module in the history, history output to set force time. Let's take it 500. You can take it your way also. Now, the reaction force RF will be in the Z direction. So, RF I need, RF3 in the Z direction, V3 velocity in the Z direction, and U3 that means displacement in Z direction. Velocity I'm going to see that how it varies with respect to time, what I have given, and displacement also. All these things are required. During the history also, you know this is the already created step for energy, make them 500 also, and output only the relevant things. All I, I need to curtail the hourglass effect, how much energy is used in hourglassing. These all things I have already explained in my pre previous videos, all CD, for now I don't need, I need, I don't need. FD, you may require it, this will be a friction dissipation energy used for friction and all IE is the energy absorbed energy during the impact because this will be the internal energy so this will be the absorbed energy during the impact so it is important to give an output of this all KEI required PDI don't require SEI also don't require VD is required because I have in the composites um, material property I have given the stabilization so this VD will give me the output of the damping that I have used in the system. I am going to check that this damping values should not go outside my proportional limits. WK, 
don't need it. So these are the values that I will require. So this is all done. Now come to the mesh modeling. Tough. First of all, let's make the tough. Uh, let's mesh the tough. See the part. There is no need for some higher frequencies. 5 mm. No, not. 0 5 mm. That is fine. Mesh part. This will be meshed. You can mesh it a bit finer if you want. 3 mm. 0 0.3 mm. Now let's come to composite. See part. First of all, make a. Say I'm going to mesh it with 0.7 mm the whole plate. And after that, I'm going to mesh it the impact region. This I'm going to mesh it with the. Uh, 2.5 that is that that all depends upon the conversion study that I have done you can see 17,000 elements are generated so accordingly you have to do your conversion study see where your results are consistent on mesh so do your conversion study and do as I said there will be two elements in the thickness direction once you do the conversion study, also see that during the high strain rate testing, it's important to see the aspect ratio of the element, especially the impact region. So this is the impact region. The aspect ratio should be around one. See, the aspect ratio is definitely, or this is exactly equal to one. If you remove, if you increase or decrease some elements, this will going to change the aspect ratio. So try to make the aspect ratio unity. So this is my this plate and. A composite plate also 90 degree I'm going to match the same way. See part 0.7 mm. You may think you may ask me a question like why I'm using these points. These all depends upon the uh, wave you sorry uh, 0.7 mm these all depends that how you are how finer you wanted to make your composite that all depends upon fracture energy as I have explained in my previous lecture that fracture energy do depends upon or the uh, convergence solution for the fracture energy do depends upon the element size or the characteristic element length that you used to input in your simulations so that all depends upon how you are going to mesh it so this is also done now choose the element element type as I as I said earlier we use explicit continuum shell use the stiffness and to reduce the convergence issues I use a maximum degradation value da damage variable should be equal to 0.997 that means before damage variable goes to unity my uh, that default default value of a damage variable is one so i used it as a smaller value of the a smaller value than one so that the convergence issues are avoided because once you do the damage variable one the stiffness reduces to zero uh, appropriately exactly to zero so that is not exactly right or cannot be handled by the software directly so it's important, especially in the case of impact, that you should give some, some lesser value of maximum degradation. So our glass, I have used, I have explained to you about the hour glass in my previous videos, what these are, I used stiffness, and I have also in the output variable used all AE, so that my energy related to this is uh, um, also calculated. So this is also the mesh element type choose this explicit continuum shell stiffness this will be a bit different 0.995 ok so that is done let's check the assembly so this is how I, my assembly looks like so my all modules are done let's check it 
what we have done. 0, 90 layer we have made. Property given, both of them. Tap has been assigned the property, fine. Assembly created, fine. The steps made. This is fine. Output the reaction force, displacement, velocity, all that is fine. General contact algorithm, always self. Let's check them. First layer, second layer, third layer. Oh, I am, I am, uh -huh, sorry, sorry. Three interactions are here, so three I have done. And that is fine. Okay, rigid body assigned, fine. Boundary condition. Do check your boundary condition during this. First is okay. Velocity assigned. Yes. Velocity assigned. Amplitude is also assigned. Now, uh, one small remark on this. Uh, you might have a velocity on with you, but you might not have an amplitude with you. Um, perhaps you are not doing the uh, experiments. You may also only wanted to do the numerical simulation by seeing through some general paper so you wanted to simulate some experiments of some general paper you check out the force time history of that and from the force time history obtain the velocity time history so from the force time history it's by using the newton's laws of motion it's, it's very easy by by a simple differentiation and integration numerical integration you can find out the velocity corresponding velocity to that force time history and you can um, use that velocity history but in fact if you don't know how to do that all these things and only if you wanted to see how you wanted to model this impact you can do one thing you don't need to give the uh, give this impact don't give take this instantaneous and give the impact velocity of 2.1 2.51 for this step create one more step this will be the additional step and give the minus 2.5 velocity so the tub will impact and then rebound back so this will be a compression after impact test tub will go hit the impact and then rebound back so in that way you can do it so this is all complete i have meshed the model properly assigned the properties all these things i have done so let's come and check out the this is mostly the problems that you people face i have not run the model so i run the model and show you that there is no error in that if there is some error i will explain you the reason for the error so the analysis is progressing warning so this is a temporary warning you can ignore it no problem okay then these are our there's no need for okay some okay 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 so <laughs> so these kind of errors you used to assign so wh what I will that I have um, received is that the rigid body that I've, that, that I have used uh, it's important to give an inertia of the rigid body you can give an inertia of a rigid body or you can fix the movement of this rigid body you can do either way you can give the inertia from here the special inertia and below the mass you can give the rotary inertia so for now i don't have a rotary inertia for all, all of these so what i'll do i'll fix the movement i'll make sure that this projectile goes only in this direction and not in any other direction so that is the error that what it was given so displacement curtail in all the so region is this one and curtail the other rotation so only displacement u3 will go and the projectile will not go in any other direction or any other rotation. Fine, this error will be gone there. So, I don't think that error will be there now. It's a, it's a basic rigid body motion curtailment that you all know how to do it. So, that is complete. That is done for rotation radius of freedom. Make sure that there is no jumps across these steps. That is what the 
error was coming. So I make sure that there is no jumps now. So it's running now. Okay, it's it's going to run, and I'm going to show you the results. I already made the results. So these are my results. First of all, show you how these will going to impact. First of all, it goes inside and then comes back. Goes inside and then comes back. The coming back of it is a material response. Remember it. So let's see some of the what we have encountered in this in the output. This is my delamination that occurred at this point. As I as I said earlier, there will be an edge boundary condition here. So definitely, only this part is curtailed, and the rotations are allowed. In the experiment, also you have you will be going to see that the root that the plate will going to make some delamination at the edges. So that is how the AS team has designed it. And apart from this, there will be now the damage moves. Hashin criteria damage moves. So this is a shear damage. How the shear damage is evolved. This is the mostly an out of plane behavior. So the shearing effect will be very high. As you can see here, the shearing effects are very. These are the interlaminar shear stresses. Okay. So see the fiber compression mode. This is the fiber compression mode. So these are the fiber compression. Not that much. Fiber tension will be a bit higher. Fiber compression, matrix compression, and matrix tension. This will be a lot of matrix tension coming up here. A small advice here with respect to the Hashin criteria. When you do an impact simulations. The Hashin criteria will going to predict the fiber compression, fiber tension, and matrix tension. Going to predict accurately these all three uh, damage modes. But the matrix compression mode, this may not be predicted correctly by the Hashin failure criteria. And Hashin himself was not able to calculate the uh, angle of the um, angle at which the matrix com compression. took place and since it is an out of plane displacement so the uh, sigma 3 3 uh, values will be more dominant and we know that the abacus hashin criteria only from for 2d criteria so um, you have to use uh, some of the u video mat already available in the abacus website some video mat are already available for the hashin 3d criteria so you can at least model the three dimensional effect of this because the three dimensional effects are very predominant in these regions so i recommend you to use a solid element instead of a continuum element and use a 3d hashin failure criteria if you want it to be more specific uh, use a puck criteria that will that is more um, more better criteria than hashin because it takes into account the matrix compression effects also in the matrix matrix compression during the compression of a matrix it is seen that the matrix compression took place at some particular angle and puck found out that this angle is around 53 degrees celsius uh, 53 degrees sorry so uh, it's important to take account the effect of that angle also along which the damage took place so that is important apart from this Uh, we also need to see the force time history so reaction force in my force time history is like this see how beautiful it came these are the initial uh, rebounding of the plate due to the initial uh, elastic differences of the plate and the tub there is small vibrations since my energy is not that much high uh, uh, i have not perforated the plate there is no perforation and after reaching the maximum value it goes down so it's a very good for displacement curve and it quite well matches with the curve that i have for now 
but for a higher impact you need to go for a 3D Hashim Prelayer criteria or in fact it will be very good if you are going to use a PUC criteria. So this is a force displacement, uh, sorry force time and uh, um, force displacement I am going to save this value force this is my force displacement see my displacement time this is my displacement time okay and this is my velocity time my velocity time is exactly approximately same as my in my experimental values as you can see this is blue line is my experimental value approximately same and this is the viscous dissipation energy you can see that it is not that much high 0.2 is very small with respect to the internal energy of the system which is 3.5 very high so this is the energy that I require this is my absorbed energy ok and artificial strain energy the effect is also that not that much high 0.25 only not all more. so that is how these things are modeled I explained it uh, uh, quite comprehensively to you how these things are done so if you have any questions any comments any errors that I have made please do comment in the YouTube video okay thanks for now thanks for watching